Hey everybody, welcome to the stage door tonight. We're very, very excited. I got, first of all, I got Tom down in Florida. How you doing, Tom? Or I'm doing host? great. Good to see you guys. Absolutely. And we got Jimmy Dempster with us, actor Jimmy Dempster. <laughs> Jimmy, how you doing down in Atlanta? What's going on, guys? How are you? Good Things doing? are good. Things are good. Man, during quarantine, how are, you, how, is you and the, how are you and the family doing during the quarantine right now? Uh, we're doing pretty good now, man. It was pretty tough about a month or so ago when everything started hitting all at one time and everybody was shut down across the board. But as you guys, I'm sure know, like you said, over in Florida, and they, uh, about a week or so ago, we did like a soft opening here in Georgia. And everybody was kind of looking at us, like all eyes were on yeah. Georgia. And I'm like, okay, let's see. They're yeah. going to do it first and see how it goes, you know. And then Florida followed suit. And I think, actually, I think we're like 12% uh, fewer cases now in Florida. I think it's like 14 last time I checked. So That's everybody's good. doing pretty good, like less corona cases. So yeah, since we opened, hopefully that continues. And keep, yeah. keep yes, our fingers crossed on great. that. That'd be awesome. I love Florida. We try to get, we lived there for seven years before we oh. came here. Oh, ah, nice. Yeah, that's where we came from. Yeah. I love that. We like to go down there because they've still got friends and family there. Yeah. Families are family. I have family down there as well, too. I'm up in New York now. I know Tom's down in Florida, but Tom and I lived in the same town for, I was there for eight years. And then when I moved up to New York, I've been up here now for about nine years, but my son still lives there. So I'm, I'm in Florida quite often and Atlanta as well. You know, I always have layovers in Atlanta and I'm a big fan of Atlanta. You know, I try to, uh, when, when we lived down there, we, we drove up there quite often to, uh, to, you know, to see, see everything up there. And, and I did a lot of filming up there as well. Uh, so George is very, a very, very film. So, um, oh, heck yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, you know, I, I, this is airing right a after, uh, you know, the Deadly Cults uh, show that, that you just um, portrayed uh, the, you know, the murderer, <laughs> Gerald Cruz, uh, for, um, for the Oxygen uh, Channel series. And, you know, one of the questions I have for you, and I know you've done a lot of uh, work on, you know, ID Channel and uh, a lot of, you're portraying real characters and, you know, versus fictional characters, you know, what kind of um, research goes in and what kind of preparation goes into playing an actual character, like a real person versus a fictional character? I'm sure a lot of research, correct? Yeah, um, it, it depends. Like uh, the one I did a couple of years back for the show Swamp Murders, uh, I was playing a character named uh, John Barrett. And I, that was the first one I did. And I did my research. I Googled and saw if I could find anything based on the actual cases and all of the stuff's there. And it was kind of cool. And at the end of the show, they show the picture of the real people. So when yeah. you're watching the show, you're like, oh, wow, this is crazy. And then at the end, they do the reveal where they show the, you know, they have me throughout the whole show. And at the end, they show the picture of the actual guy. And it almost never matches yeah. really <laughs> on the nose who it looks like. I've had people tell me, they message me like, dude, we were watching the show. We saw you. And uh, the Swamp Murders one in particular was funny because people, at the end of the show, when they show the picture of the actual guy, they're like, it doesn't look anything like you. It's like, well, keep in mind, there's probably a good 10 to 20 year difference. You know, sure. during a lot of a lot of those cases are obviously, you know, 80s, 90s. Some of them go back to the 70s. Right, right. And so, so Jimmy, like, yeah. uh, when you first got started, uh, I was looking at your IMDb. Um, you didn't actually really get started until 2012 when you did like a cameo in a zombie thing. And at it said that's when you went I'm gonna do this full-time and I mean had you done any acting like as a youngster in <clears throat> school or anything or uh, I mean I, and were you at all scared about the fact that like this is a tough way to make a living but you've done pretty <laughs> good at it no nah, I've never I never had any uh, prior experience before that I just kind of fell into it uh, when we moved to Florida in 2009, I had no idea about the film industry. I had no idea about anything that was going on there. There was some, because at the time there was some, you know, still some good stuff being done down there. They, you know, they did a lot of big productions and a lot of stuff in Tampa, Clearwater, especially in Orlando, major cities. But uh, my wife actually uh, got into taking a commercial class. She was like, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. And she got into it and met some people through there and found out about Full Sail University. Mm. And uh, uh, the cool thing about them is on weekends, you can go in and you can audition for projects. You can go in there at like nine in the morning and you could be there all day till like five at night, just going around to the different rooms because all the students are filming like their senior theses and they're, you know, doing a lot of smaller productions and it's a great place to get started. Did, so, did, did you do stuff at Full Sail uh, at the beginning? Yeah, when she kind of did it and was like, eh, that's not really for me. It was more of a time thing. 
So I had nothing but time around that time. So I kind of jumped into it and I just started pursuing it from then on. And that's the first place I started was, uh, was Full Sail. I found out about the guys over there and we did a project called um, Undead Apocalypse. And I was an extra on that. And from there, some guys were telling me about the rockabilly zombie thing. And so we shot all day on Undead Apocalypse and then we shot all night on Rockabilly Zombie Weekend for a couple of weeks. And it was just day, night, day, night, no sleep. So it was a really good way to break, in, to break <laughs> into the industry. <laughs> you know, just rough, just raw without any, yeah, just jumping in. And that's pretty much kind of like that is anyway. You got to be available at all times. Yeah. No sleep. <laughs> well, you, you were in a popular horror movie. And, you know, last year, I believe it, it, uh, it won an award uh, at the Day of the Dead uh, Horror Con, I believe. Uh, but it was, it's called Box. And, you know, I watched the movie. It's an incredible you know, peace and, and you, your, your character, it was, it was to see the evolution of that character was amazing. And, and I really enjoyed the film and, you know, there wasn't a ton of dialogue at all. Um, but it was just, to me, it was just, it was riveting the whole thing. So talk about that project. And also, you know, you I think you, you were in attendance uh, when it won that award, correct? Yeah. Um, it's, got, it, yeah, it's tough to, let me see the day of the dead one. No, I wasn't there for that. Okay. Um, or at least not actually that played all of the day of the deads. It's been, it was in Atlanta here. I was here for the Atlanta one. Right. Right. And then it went to Chicago, North Carolina. It did the whole, I think it went to Vegas, if I'm not mistaken, just with days of the dead alone. Sure. Uh, yeah, it was just one of those. It was the last project I shot in Florida before we moved here. So about two, three years, about three years ago now. And, uh, we got together with my buddy Brant and my buddy Lee, who's the director and Brant's a DP. And they were all getting ready to move too out of Florida. They were, they okay. Were ready. We, were all, we were all kind of going, you know, separate ways. Sure. Kind of thing. And uh, so why don't we just get together and we do this project, you know, we'll, we'll get something together. We'll come up with a cool script and we'll do like a, somebody came up with the name horror noir. And oh, it's yeah. like, that's the best way to, best exactly. way I could think to describe it. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't. I did an interview not long ago and that's what the guy said. He goes, yeah, it's all like a horror noir. And I'm like, yeah, it's a little bit of everything, but that's the perfect way to describe it. Sure. Uh, it was really based around, let's do something completely different. Cause like you said, I, I could do the killer. I could do the bad guy. I do a lot of villain stuff. Right. This piece gave me the chance to kind of express myself in a much different way. You know what I mean? He, he's not really a bad guy, the character, he's not killing nobody. Well, not really. <laughs> Spoil <laughs> Spoilers. We, we don't know that yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, yeah, not again, not like you're not a on the nose mustache twirling tied to the train tracks villain, which I, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I haven't done that yet either, but you know, it, it was not like a bad, bad guy. It, it's a, it gave me a chance to yeah. act and show a variety of different emotions. And like I said, not a lot of dialogue, but right. uh, it was like, we wanted to focus more on atmosphere. Right. No, it was very, very well done. So it was a great show. Thanks for checking that out. Absolutely. One of the things, too, uh, I saw, like, you have a wrestling background. You've done some MMA stuff, and you do your own stunts. Mm -hmm. And, I, in fact, I saw in one of the Punisher, I think, Punisher outbreak, uh, you actually got a concussion and kept rolling. Like, uh, <laughs> how, yeah. that, does that help in, in – well, I, I guess people go and let's bring him in because <laughs> uh, you know he'll do his own <laughs> yeah, thing. He can take a shot. Yeah, he yeah. can take a shot, and he's gonna he's, no, he's gonna be okay. I guess. Yeah. 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 That, I suppose it does. Yeah, it has to. Well, I've it, always been involved in something. Yeah. Uh, and, and along the same lines, you also are self-taught at guitar and drumming. Has anybody ever have you ever tried to like incorporate that into <laughs> one of your shows or one of the things you're doing? It'd be kind of cool yeah. to have a guy who suddenly breaks out in a heavy metal jam. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny you mention that, man. I've always loved to play that kind of role, like a rocker type thing. I mean, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch. I'm just a, I just recently cut my hair shoulder <laughs> length, but it's usually long. I'm a diehard rocker by, yeah, yeah. you know, as long as I get, you know, as long as I get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was, sure. I was actually, going, you know, you know, Jimmy, you've done a lot of things in the, in the past several years, and we have a lot of new artists that, that watch our podcast and listen to us. Uh, you know, so what kind of words of advice would you have to, uh, to get some of these roles and prepare for some of these auditions? I mean, what's, what's are some, some things that you can talk to our new people, uh, our new artists out there about getting ready? Oh, for these things? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Um, the one thing I always say is, uh, you know, be in it to win it, but just make sure you're in it for the right reasons. I mean, right. if you're in it for money and all that fame and all that nonsense, it's like, cause it's not about the money, especially right in the beginning when you're yeah. starting out, you know, you're gonna have to do a lot of projects that you might not really, you know, a lot of it is, uh, you know, for footage and for exposure. And I've worked with some people even recently who are just starting out. They don't want that. They want to get in. They want to make the money and they want to get yeah. on shows. And it's like, well, it's a process. It really is a process. Um, yeah. I've had a lot of doors open for me fairly quickly, rather pretty early on in my career where some people are still kind of trying to get to that level after a couple of years. It's different for everybody. Right. Uh, living in Atlanta certainly does not hurt. Um, yeah. Sure, yeah. Being in the hub here is definitely a lot easier. I have more access to a lot more things than I would if, uh, cause I used to make, like I said, we lived in Florida. Oh God. I used to make so many trips back and forth. Like there, there were, there's been times when I would get up five o'clock in the morning and have like a call time that day, or even come into Atlanta for an audition. It's a good yeah. seven, eight hour drive from Orlando. Right. Go in, do a read for like five, 10 minutes, turn around, get back in the car go over to Mellow Mushroom, grab some lunch, <laughs> jump in the car and drive right back. I'd be back by night, you know, yeah. all the same day. Yeah. That's actually, I was talking to a friend of mine, Crazy. friend of mine out in LA who was pursuing all that. And he said the same thing, kind of, there are so many people who seem to be putting, like, I want to be famous ahead of, I want to learn his craft. And right. yeah. learning the craft is really the way to go. If you do it for yeah. that, then fame, Fame could come later. And in all honesty, I've always thought I don't want fame. And I've been very good at not ever. <laughs> but fame, fame means you can't go to Publix without a bunch of people wanting to take your picture. I'll take fortune all day. <laughs> fame is yeah. to a degree. Yeah, it's a lot of it, too, is just the culture now. It's the, you know, the instant gratification. Yeah. You know, how many likes am I going to get? You know, how yeah. many followers do, do I have? A lot of people are so consumed with that. Yeah. And it really doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. I've been to places where their social media following is such, they got like 52 million followers. And then you go to one of their events and it's like, you can hardly, you're giving tickets away. Yeah. You, you can't, you can't fill the room. Like, yeah, it's crazy. So. Yeah. And the other thing, Jimmy, you know, with, with all the stuff that you've done, you know, um, the roles that you played, do you want to kind of, kind of shift at, at any point in your career and, and do something like maybe comedic or do something, uh, play a different type of uh, role uh, other than like the bad guy, the killer, the, you know, that type of thing. Is that something you, you want to try at some point? Oh yeah, that, of course. I mean, you know, I didn't get into it to just do, you know, a certain specific, just like I think a filmmaker doesn't get into it just to do right. like just Westerns or like, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. be the, the war movie filmmaker, you know, like I, I'm yeah. always open to do whatever. Um, it's just a lot of times you got to kind of go with what you're, uh, everybody's got their niche and that's what I sure. get called. I mean, I, I'm, I can't say no. It's like, if you get called for that, what are you going to, right. You gonna, I can say no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to turn down work, you know? So it's like, if you're, people think you're good at something, you know, go for it. Man. No, and hopefully you get the chance to branch out on that. Um, one thing I did think was interesting when I was reading your bio uh, there was one show that you did, I don't know, I think it was a movie, but it might have been a series, but where you had a tattoo on your arm and that that tattoo was the tattoo that your dad had. And that, <laughs> yeah. that did you like go, I want this tattoo, like did, was that your idea to pick out this tattoo? Did you already have it or did you do it specifically just kind of to honor your dad in that show? No, that was for uh, The Fate of the Furious. That was the oh yeah, yeah, project. that's what it was. Yeah, that was the first the first project I shot when we come here. It was uh, it was cool because the sound stage is right across the street from my house at the time. <laughs> nice. Oh wow! <laughs> and they were they were looking for people to do some stunts and to do some featured stuff and you know and I was like yeah, I could do that. I threw my name in the hat and they said yeah because at the time I was just coming off of another film where I had my hair all the way down to here, full beard, so I looked like an inmate for sure. I looked like a <laughs> crazy <laughs> hair on the teeth psychotic inmate. <laughs> so it was fun, man. It was fun doing that. And the first day they put us in the makeup chair and they had the guy come in and he had a whole bunch. He says, we're going to do you up. We're going to give you tattoos on your neck, on your hands, your arms. I said, cool, do it. <laughs> Go for wow. it. I'm down for it. And he showed me the big bag of tattoos. And one of them was the Panther. Oh, you know, wow. The Panther tattoo. Yeah. And yeah. my father, my father has the same exact tattoo. He got that when he was, oh God, years ago, he got that when he was a teenager. 
It was just one of his first tattoos. He got on his arm and I said, yeah, yeah put it right here on my arm. So I told the Very guy cool. behind the story behind it, why I wanted it. And he goes, that is the coolest freaking thing, man. I was like, yeah, it's a little nod to my dad. And a lot of that stuff ended up on the editing room floor anyway. Or like, I, I've been told like there's some stuff on the DVD and special editions where it's like, I, I saw you. I'm like, that's pretty cool. It was just fun doing it. You know, I, was, I just like being on set. Now, when uh, when when they shoot these TV shows, like the the one that just aired in, on Oxygen, when when does that shoot? I mean, like how far or how long ago was that actually done before it actually aired? Oh, we shot that. Uh, when did we shoot that? Not too. Uh, yeah, about four months ago. Oh, okay. It was fairly, so not too fairly long ago. quick. I was yeah, say. TV, TV is cool, man, because it's TV is fairly quick. There's yeah. been times I've we'll shoot something on like today. And then it'll air in like a month or less than a month. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? It all really depends on, on what's, what, what's going on. I did uh, Devious Maids for a lifetime. That was a quick one. Yeah. I shot that. I was still living in Florida. Again, had to make the trip. They flew me out to, you know, ABC Studios, shot the show, and then flew back two or three days later. And about a week after that, we were prepping to move, loaded up the U-Haul, drove down, and the show aired when we moved here, like a couple days after we moved. Wow. I oh, still okay. had box. We still had boxes in my house when the show was on. <laughs> Everything was still in boxes. And they're like, you want to watch it? I'm like, yeah, I guess we'll watch it. You know, and yeah, we shot that wow. quick in and out. And, you know, that's TV's quick, though. It tends to be. There's, I don't know, there's, uh, they have more of a schedule, I think. Yeah, for sure. Well, and Jimmy, since uh, this is airing, like, right after the show, um, the, the Deadly Cults, um, and you did research on this Gerald Cruz guy. I mean, it's no spoiler alert because the show will already be done. Uh, what was what was his guy like? I mean, that, what did you find out about this guy? Yeah, when I was looking into that, uh, I kept getting this thing saying, California Death Cult, Gerald Cruz, California Death Cult, the camp. And it really put me in mind of like a Manson. Yeah, right. Manson, Manson right. type thing. Very manipulative. Yeah. I mean, a lot of cult figures are like that anyway. You know, they're very manipulative. Uh, mm. <laughs> manipulative. Yeah, right, right. Oh, and the tiger pray, pray on the weak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. insane. Yeah. yeah, just like that. They prey on the weak and get followers. And so yeah. it wasn't really too much of a stretch because, I mean, a lot of the cult characters are like that anyway. But, yeah, it was a pretty – You guys, are, if you guys check it out, it's a pretty crazy story. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm Now that I saw the trailers, I'm like, I, wanna, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely want to watch this thing. Um, yeah, now, as, cool far, as far as uh, – Jimmy, as far as movies versus TV, now, do you have a preference? Did you enjoy – like uh, shooting one over the other. I mean, I, I suppose the process is similar as far as the filming of it, um, you know, the lines and, and everything like that. But I mean, do you have a preference uh, one or the other? No, not really. Um, the only thing I would say, like I said before, that I kind of prefer a little bit more about television and films, especially independent films, is, uh, you know, you never know when it's going to be said and done. With right. TV, you got a pretty good idea. Like I said, if you're shooting something in January, February, there's a pretty good chance it's going to be out by, you know, April, May, or at yeah. least by the end of that year, you know, because they have a schedule and all that stuff. Right. Uh, film, like films, like especially independent films, it's tough. I mean, I got some stuff that's coming out now that has been in post and has done like the festival circuit and stuff like that. And they've gone back for some reshoots on some of these projects and some of them I was even involved in picking back up like three for some of the stuff's been sitting on the shelf, like doing all that stuff for about three, four years. Oh, wow. So, so well, that's, I, I try not to, yeah. Dave and I did an independent film years ago, and post production can take longer than anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It can really go on you for never, a while. Know how it's gonna, you never know how it's going to turn out. And for me, in the beginning, it was kind of frustrating because, like, it, it, like it, again, this goes back to anybody starting out or wanting to start out. It's yeah. uh, in the beginning, all you want to do is be part of something that's going to get hopefully be good. Sure. And and more importantly, be you know seen and get out there and, and of course be good you want to be part of it because you want the exposure and you want to get the experience and uh and of course you need footage too you want to get that demo reel cut together yeah. you want to start reaching out to some agents and build and build and get some bigger stuff and uh when you got you know two three years worth of stuff and you're grinding and you got all that stuff sitting on the hard drive somewhere it could be frustrating a lot of people aren't ready for that you know they're like well where's the Where's the stuff? And I've been with directors and editors when they're calling people ask because it's the first thing you do. Where's my footage? <laughs> like, we, <laughs> yeah. can't, we can't give you the footage. They don't get it. You know, it's like, we can't give you the footage. The movie's not done yet. You're going to blast that everywhere. Right. Yeah. 
you know, exactly. you gotta wait for the movie to release. So I, I try to be respectful. I wait for the film to release and then I'll post a clip or something now and again. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do that. But one thing I wanted to ask you on a personal level, back to the guitar and drumming, um, like I saw it, like you're into heavy metal, rock, jazz, even. Everything. Uh, yeah, the, what was your first album? Because we all know our first album that we ever had as a kid. <laughs> what what my, was your, your big influence back then? My first album was Dark Side of the Moon on vinyl. I had, oh, took yeah. it from my father. I took it from my father. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys remember the, you guys remember the old uh, turntable slash liquor can oh. slash oh, TV? Yeah, I've got one yes. down in the basement. <laughs> I would kill. I would kill. They had the big speakers on the side. Yeah, yeah. That that was my that was my first entertainment system that was handed down to me by I think my grandmother. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, back way back in my first apartment, I still had that thing. Turntable <laughs> worked and everything, and I played the hell out of that album. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's that amazing. was that that was my first concert. I saw Pink Floyd do Dark Boy. Side of the Moon in Philadelphia at the Spectrum, and oh my God. I, it's, I, it may be the best <laughs> concert I've ever seen. Like nobody has topped it since. And yeah, it had a giant totally. thing that where a plane threw flew through the auditorium and exploded over their heads. You know that, yeah, the part of the album where it's like you hear the and all that. My I had a friend who told me beforehand, and this friend of mine was a compulsive liar. So I'm like, yeah, you're <laughs> and he oh, yeah. said that whole thing is about this like crazy that. guy who ran onto a runway at a at an airport and the plane swerved to miss him and blew up and exploded and i'm like yeah sure i'm sure that's true and then <laughs> yeah. at the concert this plane comes flying through and i'm like <laughs> holy shit this is <laughs> you're telling the truth <laughs> <laughs> the one compulsive liar the one time that he's yeah, the one that's time right <laughs> that's like crying wolf <laughs> So, uh, so Jimmy, what, do you, have you, what about directing? Is, is that something that you've ever wanted to transition into eventually is directing? Yeah. Um, I've actually had the opportunity a couple of times on, oh God, a couple of projects now that I've done where I've actually had to, like, I, we did a film, a couple of box box. I was able to direct myself and direct some other stuff in a lot of those shots. So that's great. Uh, I was able to, uh, we did a project a couple of years ago called one night of fear. And uh, when it comes time for my character to die in the script, it says, you know, goes out to the barn, saves the girl, has tussle with the guy and dies. It, it's not written out. You know, it's not described. Right, right. You know, you guys have seen too. So it's like, uh, we had to, we got, we get ready to shoot the scene. I go out to the barn and they're like, the director pulls me aside. He goes, okay, Jimmy, we don't really have anything lined up. So whatever you guys want to do, you want to get with the Jason and work out a fight scene and do whatever you guys want to do and we'll come up with some ideas. I said, yeah, that sounds good. So we got together about maybe 10 minutes or something like that. We put together like a quick little tussle fight thing, but yeah. uh, and we worked it out and it was cool to have that kind of freedom because I was able to design the fight. I was able to design some of the shots and the layouts. Like there's a couple of close-ups of the hands quivering in the feet and stuff like that. Yeah. That's it's more of a psychological kill than like blood and guts. Right. Um, yeah, I was. I really wanted to focus more on that, but I, yeah, I get. I've had to do it. I've got to do it a couple of times. I would definitely not rule that out. I would love to do that, like a full feature or anything like that. Well, just as a follow up, really quick, and talking about directing yourself in box uh, in some of the scenes, there was a scene where you were in front of a mirror, and it was very intense, <laughs> and you ended up putting your head, you know, into the mirror, and and. I wanted to break that mirror so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but talk, but talk I tried about so hard to crack it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was waiting for it to smash. But um, but yeah. t talk about that scene and and what would you know, what what do you? I mean, it's probably it could be a personal question, but what do you think about when you're getting into an intense scene like that to get you into that frame of mind to to do a scene? Because like, the first thing I thought of when when I saw that scene was was um, you know, the Joker, the new Joker movie. Um, yeah, you know, with with Joaquin okay, have... Phoenix. So, you know, how, how do you get into that type of mindset? It's funny, man, because that's one of those crazy things. Uh, you mentioned the Joker. I've had Joker. I've had The Shining. I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, this is what they got out of it. It's, I was like, yeah, it's all that stuff rolled into one. Right, um, right. It's amazing. I just basically, it was all improv. It was yeah. like we have to have the, re the final reveal, I guess, as it would be. And it has to be intense. And it, that was just basically it. We have to do something to bring this thing to a crescendo. Yeah. And I just wanted to go all in on it. Like I said, I was, we shot that scene at, like for a good day. 
most of it. That was a whole day just shooting that scene. That was a really well was, done. Very well done. It was great. Very I, yeah, effective. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm impressed with the way it came out, like with the editing and stuff like that. Because you feel kind of silly just sitting there smashing your head. And that was just all, <laughs> that was just improv. That just, that felt right at yeah. the time. Because the guy's coming undone. He's unraveling. It's like, you don't want to just sit there. I didn't want to, I've seen people play fake crazy and stuff like that. I don't want to do that. I right. wanted to just, you know, you want to sit there and like, or whatever. You know, like, no, it was, it was very effective. So, yeah. Well done. I want, like I said, I really wanted to smash that window. I really wanted blood. I wanted all that. Yeah. That now, was great. That, and uh, I've done a bunch of theater uh, and acting and yeah, getting into that sort of a mindset and, and improv and feeling in that moment is to me, that is what acting really is. You, you know, when you're there, you can, you just right. feel it in every part of your body. Um, but I wanted to ask you too, real quick, because I'm a huge Walking Dead fan, and you were one of the saviors, if I'm not incorrect on this. Um, what was it like working with Greg Nicotero and, and just that whole group? They say it's very family-like when you're there. Yeah, I did. Um, I was on set for two episodes. Once I was advising behind the scenes a little bit, and then the next time I went down, they asked me if I wanted to be in The Saviors. I said, yeah, sure. And uh, we did that, and it is it is very much like that. It is very much of a family atmosphere. It was probably one of the best uh, on-set uh, experiences that I could recall for, you know, for not doing something where, you know, you have a trailer and you have your own thing. It was yeah, just, yeah. Everybody, well, yeah, yeah, everybody I, was really respectful, really nice. And Nick Cotero, he goes back. We go, I, oh, God, I love his work. Oh, All the way back to Day of the Dead and everything yeah. he's done. So yeah, it was he's just really cool. with what he does. And that's a, there's a friend of mine who was one of the, the kingdom people. Um, here in Orlando, and he he was telling me that the groups, like the Saviors will all go to lunch together, and the, the his little <laughs> group of Jerry and him and those guys would all go to lunch together, and not that everybody doesn't get along with one another, but that you you fall in with right. a little. Yeah, they do. It's really method as far as that goes. Everybody kind of stays in their own kind of little thing, and again, it's it's nothing disrespectful. Like you said, theater, a lot of people go off into their own space to get where they need to be, you know, for their performance. And yeah, yeah, it was like that with them too. It was on any given day, we'd have anywhere from 15 to 25 saviors. And yeah. especially in the one scene when they do the big wide shot at the end of, I think season seven, one of the last episodes is one of the ones I was in. They did that big wide dolly shot and it was, there must've been 50 extra. There must've been 50 saviors there. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, it was a lot of people there. And we all <laughs> ate together, hung out and talked. And, Cause you gotta, it get kind of boring on set sometimes too, man. You gotta kill the, uh, Oh, yeah. sure. Talk and crack jokes. <laughs> yeah, <know>, it's hot. <laughs> well, it's well, kind of I, well known too, isn't it, Tom? And you got, I mean, I don't know if you've heard this, Tom, but um, tell me if I'm wrong, Jimmy, but the, the set there is so secretive that they have like security everywhere because they, they don't want anything getting out to the public about what's going on because it's such a popular show. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because then people would probably be, you know, crashing the set and hanging out and, you know, you don't want that. Right, no. right. <laughs> we're we're here to work, you know. That's right. <laughs> I guess there is a, when you're acting on those kind of shows. Well, whether it's that show or one of the movies, is there a, how much time do you, are you given to get your lines down? You know what 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 your the script is, and how much of it is? Oh yeah. Um, it depends. It's it's always different. Uh, like the the show I did, Swamp Murders. Most of the stuff that made the final cut was was improv. Uh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, it was an interrogation scene where the guy's asking me, you know, where were you at this time? And I'm kind of telling him. And, and then it kind of, it was just supposed to end and it was going to cut, I guess. But I just kind of kept going. And I just did this whole spiel saying something about how, like, you know, oh, uh, I, said, what, I said something like, uh, if you'll excuse me, you know, I, I got better things to do or something like that. It was some improv line. And I just kind of got up and I banged the door and walked out. And the guy, kept, he didn't say cut. Yeah, he just rolled so when Whenever they roll with it, and you just kind of keep going, that's like the best feeling ever because they, they know oh. they got something. They're well, in their head. They they're like, we're gonna keep that. Yeah. You know? That's amazing, Jimmy. Because I actually that's the, that's the clip that I I put on our social media. Um, that was that oh. interrogation <laughs> scene, and oh, it's, cool. it, it was amazing. I mean, I was watching it, going, "Wow, he's really doing his lines good." I didn't I had no idea that was improv. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the first half of that is scripted, and then. Uh, yeah, the last half were all the way where I stand up and walk out. The lines before that was improv. Wow. And, uh, 
and a lot of the stuff is like that. Again, that's one of those things where I think I got the script and everything. I was booked. Uh, it, you know, when you go in to read for the scene to audition, you either go in or you do a tape now or sometimes both. Yeah. You get like just sides. You get a couple lines, a small piece of it. You don't get the whole script, but there's times when you read that and you know it. So you know that part. Right. But then, then you get the full script and you're two, three days work and you got different scenes. And then that's when you have to go over it. And, sure. You know, you got to memorize that. And there's been times when I've had two, three months to memorize it. There's been times when I've auditioned for something on a Monday and I would get booked on Thursday and we'd be <laughs> shooting that next Monday. <laughs> and wow. then they got to change. The, then there's like script changes and rewrites. And yeah, yeah. You know, so that's all fun. So it, again, it, it's different. It changes every time. You know? And, and I'm, I'm okay. guessing the answer to this is going to be the same thing. It's different and changes. But for your typical scenes, uh, how many times do you go through it from different angles and do it over and over? Because the one thing I learned when Dave and I were doing a, the movie thing is you can't have too much. You know, I, I mean, I made them. I had a bad habit of going first take. That looks great. We're good. Let's move on. And it's like you're better off getting sh do it several times and see what's the best and edit you know the editing room is where they put it together yeah oh yeah that's where everything they make everybody look awesome i've done some stuff even auditions like i'll read it i'll do an audition i'll be like eh, that probably wasn't the greatest audition and a lot of times those are the ones <laughs> that get you hired yeah <laughs> you're nice. like oh that sucked then you just get out in your car and forget about it you're driving home you're like eh, whatever and all of a sudden you, you get the call you're like yeah they want to see you again i'm like really really <laughs> Sometimes it's the ones that you don't think you did well that you actually get. Yeah, I, I actually, I actually, yeah, I actually stopped thinking about it that much. I just kind of go into it. And, yeah. You know, because especially if you're auditioning a lot. I mean, there's times when you'll audition for, you won't audition for like a couple of weeks and then you'll audition for like a month straight, you know, because it's just hot time of the year when everything's flying in. And, yeah. You know, pilot it's, it's season. And then you're, yeah. So. Well, before we let you go, Jimmy, uh, how can people find you on social media? We want to make sure that people come and look you up because you have some incredible work out there. So how can people find you? Yeah, uh, imdb.com, Jimmy Dempster. They, all my stuff gets posted up there if they want to check future stuff, past stuff. Um, Instagram, I'm on there, Real James D. I try to get on there at least a couple times a week. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I did the Facebook thing for a while, but I'm not on there as much now anymore. It seems to be more politics driven now lately so <laughs> yeah. instagram so far so good yeah well we can't thank you enough jimmy for spending some time with us tonight and uh make sure everybody goes to fi find uh, jimmy dempster on his social media and and also some of the the clips you know uh google jimmy dempster you'll see some really incredible yeah. clips uh and then you know um what do you have next J jimmy anything coming up next or in the uh, near future God. yeah well let me see we got uh by the time this airs <laughs> Deadly Colts will be on. <laughs> yeah. uh, that airs technically tomorrow night, seven. Right. Uh, I did a film, King's Gambit, just got released. That's on, available on Amazon. I think they're getting DVD next month or within the next month or after that. Okay, um, that's good. And then after that is uh, Killer Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco. We uh, picked back that up uh, in August and it'll be ready by Halloween. Oh, perfect. Perfect timing. Yeah, that is good timing. <laughs> That's the plan. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Get it ready for Halloween, man. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jimmy, again, for, for spending time with us tonight and best of luck to you uh, and everything that you do. And again, you know, we can't thank you enough. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me guys. I well, appreciate it. Great to meet you, man. You Absolutely. too, man. Florida, New York. I love it. Two of my favorite places. <laughs> Cheers, well, thank guys. you. <laughs> Have a good